Hello, listener, and welcome to this preview of our latest Patreon-exclusive episode. To continue the conversation and listen to the full episode, head over to the Beyond the Screenplay Patreon. The link is in the show notes. Hello, patrons, and welcome to this patron-exclusive episode of Beyond the Screenplay. Today we are talking about Speed, the 1994 film written by Graham Yost, directed by Jan de Bont. I'm joined by the Beyond the Screenplay team, Trisha Rand. Hello, everybody. Brian Bittner. Oh, darn. <laughs> and Alex Galleros. Hi. Uh, okay, so we're back, uh, which is exciting. Listener, hopefully it doesn't feel like we were gone to you, but the four of us have not recorded a podcast in months? A couple Quite some months. time. Yes. yes. Life has happened and babies may have happened and all kinds of things have been happening i had uh, a baby yeah it's great. Yay. Yay. yeah Congrats. yeah <laughs> and now he's like slightly bigger so i can podcast again nice. <laughs> <laughs> he's asleep is the point right excellent so now we can talk about the things that really matter mm-hmm. like speed so why are we talking about speed We're not going to get into it completely just yet, but we have a fun thing planned for this summer, listeners, and it has to do with blockbusters. Uh, I'm being intentionally mysterious, but keep an eye on the podcast, and very soon there will be an announcement explaining everything. Um, But suffice it to say that we thought we would go back to an early 90s blockbuster classic that is Speed. So let's dive in. I had not seen this in a long time. (laughs) I remember really loving this movie as a kid and just being blown away by the action. Revisiting it, the goofier parts felt goofier than ever before to me. (laughs) Uh, But I was still struck by how well-structured it is. Uh, It has a really good buildup and escalation over time. Mm -hmm. The rules of the world are very clearly communicated. The characters are distinct. Uh, There are moments where things, where physics just goes away. Uh, So that's a (laughs) a little bit of a problem. And I would say it's kind of thematically vacant despite trying. But uh, these are all things I want to get into. But overall, I really enjoyed watching this uh and it was fun to revisit this movie that is speed um it is a movie it is a movie (laughs) alex tell me your thoughts on speed so it's funny this movie i didn't see as a kid like i don't know why it wasn't part of that blockbuster rotation but yeah i guess it just didn't come into my life until i think maybe like college or something so i hadn't watched it for a while since then because it's been a while since college now and i recall seeing it and liking it more than i expected and but what stuck in my memory were those couple of goofy parts like the jump you know the the freeway <laughs> jump or like, what am i what even happened what uh and so that i said that 90s kind of vibe in my head about oh it's it's a goofy 90s movie Watching it again, it was elevated for me. I was, this movie is solid. It is so fun. It's like, it's nonstop from the beginning. It's just go, go, go. But I'm I'm with the characters. I'm, I understand exactly what's happening at any, any given moment. The complications keep coming and ratcheting up. And it, it just never gets boring and never gets old. It's just a great ride from start to finish. How many movies can we say that about? Honestly, like, yeah. like great solid tight action movies that are this entertaining start to finish with a like a really lovable duo at the center Keanu Reeves and Sandra Bullock like who doesn't love them in this movie <laughs> so uh, watching it again I'm like wait a minute is this in my top 10 of the 90s like I <laughs> love this is a great action movie and I don't like have many others that I can say I thoroughly enjoy this much from start to finish like everybody loves Die Hard but I gotta say I kind of zone out for sections of Die Hard. I kind of like lose, like lose track of what I'm supposed to care about or what's going on. I'm just like kind of uh, waiting for an action scene to be finished. I never feel that way in Speed. Speed, I am like thoroughly entertained every moment, and I just have a big grin on my face. So I don't know. I I really fell in love with Speed this time, and I'm so happy we were talking about it. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Okay, Trisha. What about you? Yeah, I mean, I I'm. 
gonna guess I saw this movie in the early aughts, not when it came out. Um, it played on TV a lot. This is one of these movies that's like mm-hmm. fairly easy to catch on TV. And so it's one of these movies that like I would watch in sections, right? Where it's just like, oh yeah, now here's the part with this, and then here's the part with the bus jump, and <laughs> now they're at LAX and it's gonna hit a plane. Plane. <laughs> 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 like what? Oh, I love it. And it's like, oh yeah, I wish forget this ends on a train. Now we're on a train. I love this part too. Um, so it is one of these movies that just kind of feels like it's. I don't know. There's something like so popcorn and pop culture about it at the same time where it just is like this huge bombastic action, like doesn't care about being intelligent or deep, not here to do any of that. But to your point, Michael, is an incredibly solidly written movie. So it's like it stays firmly in its lane you might say. Yeah. Um, it just like, it knows exactly what it is, but it's like maybe the peak example of what it is. And I just love that. Like, there's nothing not to love about it. Um, Keanu's so watchable and likable in this. Like, they had talked about, you know, more conventional sort of action stars in this. And then it, it was, this was after Point Break. So like people kind of knew who Keanu was and what he could do in terms of being an action star. But he's not like a big dumb meathead or he doesn't try to be, there's something really human and vulnerable about him. Compared to Bruce Willis, Steven Seagal, Arnold, like all the people who are the big guys. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And I want to talk more about that uh, because I think it doesn't work without the stars that it has in it. Um, And Sandra Bullock, who was not a star at the time, I think is also like a really critical part of the whole formula. But I I just think it just, I don't know, it stands up, man. There's like basically not a bad word you can say about it in terms of um, what it's trying to do. Like it does exactly everything it's trying to do to the nth degree. And it doesn't do anything it's not trying to do, which is maybe, you know, have a theme or make you think in any way. It's not trying to do either one of those things. And God bless it. I love speed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Okay. Brian, what about you? Uh, yeah, this movie came out when I was 12. So it's no surprise that my my friends and I watched it a bunch and quoted it all the time. Um, and you know, I don't remember, did I see it in the theater? How many times? Who knows? It's just a movie that I saw many times <laughs> over the course of my teenage years. And yeah, also I had not seen it in quite a while. Um, and it's definitely one of those movies where I'm like, yeah, I remember all the big moments. Uh, I'm not necessarily going to remember which scene comes after which scene and that kind of thing. Um, but when it's the thing you don't remember about a movie you haven't seen in a while is like what it looks and feels like, because that actually changes over time. Like the more you get Mm. used to like what movies are, the more you go back and watch an older movie and go, Oh, okay. I didn't realize like these effects were like this or this music was like that or whatever, because it changed. And for the, for for the opening credits, I was like, man, this is the, this is the, the 80s, the 80s this <laughs> movie that ever 1994. Um, the font. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and the way that it's like <laughs> coming in and then like yeah. the music. Um, and, the, and then the movie, get, and then <laughs> Jeff Daniels' car goes like flies <laughs> over the yeah. hill oh, for no reason. Yeah. It's amazing. <laughs> and then before a year before Michael Bay's first movie, the camera then gets out and spins around yeah. the two of them as they're getting out of the car. I was like, oh man, we're, yeah. we're like, it's like the boys. proto movie of all of these things. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, and uh, but then, of course, once the movie settles in, it's like it's like, OK, like this is a really solid movie. And and as we're saying, it knows what it is. It's not trying to be a very serious movie. It's just it's sort of like out there and goofy and it's rated R because it's like that was the time when you could do that. You know, a movie that was sort of uh, a sort of like both being like silly and and out there and kind of popcorny family, but also was rated R because that was okay of course it's all it's all very far-fetched i mean not the not the bomb on the bus or the flying over the freeway but the part where they go over 50 miles an hour in la um (laughs) but uh (laughs) but yeah really solid movie really fun to rewatch it's just always it's just always like going moving on to the next thing you know and it was definitely definitely one of my just like cherished action movies from that age along with the the Nicolas Cage, all of those, you know, the face-offs and The Rock. The Rock is like also a disgruntled ex-officer.
officer who holds civilians hostage and then a good guy officer has to save the day. You know, it's very similar, very different movie, obviously, but kind of a similar um, uh, plot. And uh, and yeah, speed's just speed's just good, dumb fun. Yeah, I remember I had the I, we must have either taped it off of TV or rented it and made a copy. Um, but I remember what? the VHS <laughs> and, like calling, writing. I'm calling Blockbuster. <laughs> <laughs> You're arrested. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be funny. Like writing speed and like trying to like write it in italics, but like by in a hand. Speedy way. Nice. <laughs> yeah, 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 like the poster. <laughs> memory of that. <laughs> Well, yeah, so this movie just like, so it it launches off with, well, first it's a very long shot of an elevator shaft. And then it like, as you're saying, <laughs> the car it, flies and announces itself. It's kind of impressive itself. the way it like, it pulls off. It's like, this was yeah. all one yeah. long shot. You know? Yeah. Or, yeah, I, I was trying to figure out, it's like, were they just looping part of it over and over again? It felt somehow, like a loop. But it felt yeah. really seamless. Fincher's going, okay, I, I see what you're doing <laughs> yeah. here. Da, da, we still da, haven't da, talked da. about Panic Room, you guys. Yeah. Oh, Put it on the list. Like yeah. But so, yeah, this whole first set piece, because when I think about speed, I think about the bus. But there's a lot of this movie that isn't on the bus, right? Mm -hmm. We have these bookends of these sequences. And the first opening sequence is extended. Like, it's a whole thing. Very long. And it does a lot of work to set up the characters, which is kind of surprising but also just the stakes of this world and you know the whole premise of bomb elevator shaft we get to meet the the characters the workers that have just had a really great presentation right we come mm. in on these people and they're on the 70th floor and they're laughing and just congratulating themselves about their great presentation they're all happy you get a little bit of like dialogue between them to kind of understand the dynamics of like oh he's the nervous one like oh that guy's kind of the dick so there's there's work done to understand that these are people before putting them into like harm's way mm -hmm. right and then you go into the whole sequence with dennis hopper and count reeves and jeff daniels and i, I was just really struck by how much care was put into constructing that sequence and pulling us into that world Hope you enjoyed this preview clip. To continue the conversation and listen to the entire episode, head over to the Beyond the Screenplay Patreon. The link is in the show notes.